Hi guys, it's Janet with the Living Room Talk. I have Ezron Bryan with me from the New York Jets. First question to you. What are your thoughts and feelings on current events? Well, you know, there's a lot of current events, right? So we have uh, COVID-19. We have uh, a lot of political things that are, that are going on in the country. Um, and, and with the combination of the two, it's got to be a little bit uneasy time in, in the country. And, um, you know, for me professionally and, and personally, obviously, you're always worried about the uh, Corona-19 virus. And, um, you know, we, we worked hard to, you know, do what we need to do to try to prevent, you know, outbreaks in, in uh, working at home. And, um, you know, on, on, on the political front, I mean, it obviously it affects us more than we think. Um, I think, you know, and that's where voting comes into play. Um, I think that um, that's an underutilized tool that we have that we can uh, express ourselves with and um, choose the right people to be in the positions of power that can, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, make the correct decisions for the country. So tell me a little bit about your journey to the NFL. Where did you go to school? Was this your ultimate goal? Um, a journey to the NFL. So I guess it started at, at Hofstra uh, University. Um, I'll, I'll tell this story because I really don't tell a lot. Of, I do tell a lot of people this story. All right, so when I first signed up for athletic training, I actually didn't know what an athletic trainer was exactly. Um, growing up in New York City at the time, we didn't have athletic trainers that worked with sports teams. So I wasn't in the, in the, in the realm of people that was like, oh, I see this, I know this, that I wanna do this right away. That came to me when I was at Hofstra University. Um, that's where I get introduced to the first athletic trainers. I'm like, man, I like this. Started you know, doing our observation hours and um, doing uh, your clinical rotations and getting experiences. And I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity to volunteer some time and work with the New York Jets who were at that time on the campus of Hofstra University. Um, I then, after that, um, you know, went back to school, did some rotations and was like, man, this is pretty cool that I just did. I think I need to do this. <laughs> and so I was fortunate enough to get an offer to do a seasonal assistantship with them and, you know, did that for a year. Then I went to the University of Michigan for two years as a GA football, uh, worked at Manhattan College for three years uh, as the assistant director of sports medicine, primarily with men's basketball, uh, then the University of Georgia for a year working men's basketball and then back up with uh, the Jets working football and uh, completed five seasons already. It doesn't even seem like I've been there that long. So that's uh, my journey in a nutshell. What do you think made you stick out for the Jets to hire you on? Uh, I think, you know, I, I mean, I don't mean to go about myself or, you know, talk about myself, but since you asked the question, I mean, it's more of a work ethic and dedication. I think that, you know, as a, as a student, a young person, I didn't believe that there was anything that I couldn't do. And, I, and that's the same philosophy I keep to this day. Um, if there's a task that needs to be done, I'm going to do it. And if I don't know how, I'm going to try to figure it out myself. Um, and I'll do a sidebar here. I think a lot of times with this generation, they don't try to figure it out themselves. They want to ask you for the answer. So my message is to this next generation, generation, exhaust all options, try to figure it out yourself. And if you don't know, then you ask, because you actually learn a lot in the process of trying to figure it out. Yeah, I figured out how to undo a stuck lock the other day with some tape remover. I was pretty you, proud of myself. There you go. You got to use what you got. Sometimes you don't have WD-40 on deck. And you got <laughs> like, to use what you what got. What do I have that um, stick things? I'm like, yep. tape remover. Tape it remover, <laughs> butter, oil, grease. I mean, whatever you got, you got to use it. All right. Tell me about the first time you met another Black male athletic trainer. And what was that experience like? Ooh, black male uh, certified athletic trainer. Um, well, uh, there aren't that many of us. So uh, <laughs> when, you, when you're in one, I think the first one I had a real interaction with was via phone call. Um, and it was uh, Sean Gibson. And I would reached out to him um, and undergot about advice for mentorship. I think I found him on the NATA, maybe the EDEC mentorship uh uh, subdivision website and I think um, you know and, and he kind of guided me a little bit and had never met me in person but I said hey I'm young I'm not sure what I'm doing here I need some help <laughs> I 
I, I need some advice. And um, to me, that was instrumental and helpful because I'm sur at the time I'm surrounded by a lot of people that don't look like me. And, and um, it's true that when you find someone that looks like you or, or culturally similar to you, you, you tend to draw to them. And it's a level of comfortability that exists and ease of talk. And um, I think the conversations are more open and frank and you, know, you, get, the, you get the real deal. Um, from from someone you don't get the sugar-coated version you get the hey this is what they say but hey this is what it actually is and um, I'm always very appreciative of those people in conversation he was um, one guy and uh, one person um, uh, yeah, I don't know another guy could be a uh, Keith Garnett I think you had on here um, previously uh, is a good guy a mentor for me so um, you know there, there are a lot of people that I reached out early um, who, was, who weren't in my uh, immediate environment that I had to reach out to and, and bring them into my immediate environment, even if it was via phone call. I'm going to ask you this because I think you'll give me an honest answer. A lot of young professionals are apprehensive about finding a mentor, just seeking out information. What kind of advice would you tell them? And did you have any apprehensions? Uh, yes, at first, because I didn't know that at where to go or where to find anyone. And, and, um, you know, that was my apprehension. And, and it's always, you always experience a little bit of apprehension when you're reaching out to someone that you don't know. Um, now that's really not a problem for me. I do it all the time, uh, even at work every day. So it's not, now to me, it's normal. Just send them an email. Hey, uh, need this. <laughs> um, how you doing? Uh, need to learn more about this. And usually you will find that people are more accommodating than, than you think. Um, you know, so for the uh, advice to the young people or, or the people coming up in a profession is reach out, uh, you know, talk to us, talk to me, talk to, uh, you know, if, if I even have to be the medium for you to find someone that you can talk to, I mean, you know, I'm, I've, you know, brought in my network enough to where if there's something that you're interested in, I probably know somebody that you need to talk to. And, you know, I, I'm surprised I don't get more emails about that than I do. Um, you know, I even pick up mentees if um, they're applying for uh, a, um, a seasonal internship with us and they don't get it but I always say hey don't be afraid to keep in contact and advice and some of those people have gone on to you know actually work at other NFL teams NBA team the freshman sports so um, just because you send an application just because you only do you know the interview I like to keep a relationship beyond that if that particular person would like to because like, uh, you know, you never know who needs help at what time. So when you're going through resumes and applications for these internships, what are you looking for and what stands out to you? Um, for our seasonals, we, I, and I felt, I think it's probably similar across the board. I mean, you're looking for someone that has done at least a summer internship with another NFL team, if not yours, and probably has done some sort of grad assistantship um, with at least maybe one year of football in there. So you get your one year high level football and then at probably another uh, uh, summer training camp, the NFL team. And, you know, with those two experiences kind of qualifies you um, as well as have great references. Um, I think that uh, I was on the phone with uh, a couple guys from Power Five schools um, this week and, you know, they had glaring references about these individuals. And I'm like, man, this is awesome. Like, you get a place that may have you know, six, seven, eight kids from that program do summer internships. And um, the impression that these individuals left was so much that they say, hey, you need to have this person. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, that's it. And, um, you know, the characteristics that they have to display really is when they call them, hey, does this person work hard? Are they a good team player? Um, do they follow directions well? And are they a fast learner? And the fast learner thing, I think we can, we can work on, but the other three, I think you just got to have. Switching gears a little bit, the Black Lives Movement, movement was very uh, it, glaring in the media this past summer. Where do you see its impact and its momentum right now? Um, well, unfortunately, with many things that, that, that happen in, the, in that sector, it's uh, the momentum dies down a little bit and it's up to us to kind of bring it back up. But I, I think the, you know, what it, what it did do was it brought a lot of the issues to light. Like some people didn't realize, even the ones that I worked with or I'm around, didn't realize the issues that, um, you know, African-Americans or people of color or, or minorities go through 
on a day to day basis. They, you know, see you and think that everything's okay, but it's really not every day. Um, and, and it's just, it could even be the stress of being the only minority in a, in a department or in, in a floor. Um, but going back there, the, the momentum definitely has, has decreased. And um, I think that there's changes because of that, uh, positive changes, whether uh, it be political or, you know, certain uh, Fortune 500 companies, big companies not deciding to endorse even political candidates because of um, their stances or um, sponsor events because of their stances or, you know, if they had previously endorsed, you know, athletes or things of that nature, they've, you know, cut ties with that. So I think that it has done some good. I think it would continue to do some good. I think we have to be that momentum. Um, you know, we just can't watch it. We have to be a part of it in whatever way we can um, in, in terms of uh, diversity, uh, inclusion and equality. You mentioned the stress of being the only minority on a staff or in a program. Can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, so um, uh, right now I think I'm the only minority um, on staff here at the, at the New York Jets. And um, it, it, most staffs, if they have one uh, minority on at least, I think some staff may have multiple, but um, I, I was the minority, probably a lot of the staffs that I, that I worked on um, in, in various places. and. Um, you know, it's, 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 it, it's, it's good to be there. Um, obviously it's great. People will learn a lot from everyone. Uh, but there's a certain dynamic of, of cultural uh, awareness that may be lost um, at, at, in the workplace or um, maybe sometimes even a feeling of being not sort of left out, but certain experiences that you can't relate to. So it's like, Oh, Okay, yeah, I, I, I got you on that. <laughs> um, but I think the I think one of the benefits is that you do get to learn more about other cultures and, and upbringings and um, interests and, and things of that nature. So I think in that realm, it's it's you know not bad. But um, I, I would uh, definitely like to see more uh, minority athletic trainers um, in the NFL or in general. Um, I think like in in New Jersey. Um, it's, it's, I know it's less than 10% uh, that we have uh, in total. And, um, you know, when you see the numbers and facts and figures, it's a little bit startling. Um, but I think it, it, you, you sometimes do feel that level of uncomfortability at first. Um, but as you go through it, it just becomes normal, uh, in essence, uh, good, bad, or different. That's just what your new normal is you know in the workplace environment have you felt uh, have you ever felt impacted at your job due to your race like you were treated differently or talked to differently um i wouldn't say so directly like i don't i don't think there's been an instance that because of my race that there has been any um conversations or, or slander or anything said about me because of that um you know, you know, growing up in, from where I grew up in New York City, it's like, um, you know, you, you get used to certain looks from certain people uh, because it is so diverse. So it's not unusual, but, you know, there's a sense of sometimes where someone looks at you like, okay, you almost feel like you don't matter. And, you know, I mean, it's not the, obviously you don't want to feel like that, but that's the reality of the world we live in. Um, in, 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 especially in big business, um, it, it's sometimes treated like that. But I mean, there's great people everywhere. Um, I'm fortunate that there's a lot of great people around me, but you know, in every bunch, not everybody's a great person. So you just have to limit your time that you spend with those people and interactions. And you, know, you move on at the end of the day and go home to your family. So us athletic trainers know what a long day our days are like how do you keep motivated through the long it's not even during the season your season doesn't end so all year how do you stay motivated i just go i mean there's no that's just how i'm built how i'm manufactured there, there is no uh you know i get up early sometimes i, I get up at you know 4 45 go to work get a workout in start the day at 6 6 30 and you know go from there 
Um, and then, you know, you get home 7.30 at night and, and the kids are like, hey, we need most, we need some dad time. So I got to do that. And, you know, by the end of the day, you probably pass out, take a long extended nap and you get up and you do it over again. And I do it without coffee. So that's impressive. I'm I'm on my like third cup already. Oh, no, oh, no <laughs> not me. I'm all natural. So how do your kids feel about you working in the in the NFL? Do they know it's cool or uh, is just daddy going to work? Well, my kids are uh, my daughter's six. The son's one and a half. He doesn't he doesn't know. Um, she she kind of knows. She just knows daddy works a lot. Um, and and uh, daddy's on the screen sometimes. And <laughs> uh, she couldn't come to the, to the stadium this year. But in years past, she's come to the stadium pregame and you know, hung out with me on the field for a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, she, I can't, she still kind of doesn't realize it. It's just dad works a lot and he's gone all the time. So, yeah. So this is my favorite question to ask people. What's the most embarrassing moment you've had as an athletic trainer? Uh, wow. Uh, that's uh, whew, uh, most embarrassing moment as an athletic trainer. Um, that, that's a great question. Uh, I don't really have many embarrassing moments to share. <laughs> um, I'm digging deep for this one. Uh, I don't, I don't have one. I, I, I don't have one that comes to mind. Oh my goodness. Hang on. Oh. Uh, How about a mistake you've made as an athletic training student or as a certified? Something that you regret something on? Something that I regret on. Um, hmm, biggest mistake. Uh, ooh, uh, one mistake was, uh, I guess, I mean, it wasn't to an athlete. It was documentation, rather. Um, and uh, we're going through some stuff on uh, medical red shirts and apparently, you know, I thought it was one, one set of paperwork and then it turned out to be a whole nother set. And uh, needless to say, there was uh, bigger issues that uh, <laughs> was caused because of that. Um, so I do pay attention to my paperwork more now. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of small things that happen along the way, um, but nothing that's really glaring like, hey, man you know, really, really messed up on this one um, that, that I, that comes to mind for me. All right, as Ron, next couple of minutes for you, your final statement, your closing statement. Uh, first, I want to thank you for having me. Um, it's been an awesome time and time did fly today. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know why we're done so fast, but I guess, <laughs> I guess in my mind, I thought it was going to be uh, longer, but no, this is awesome. Um, I think, you know, what I said earlier to, uh, that next generation of athletic trainers. I mean, I've been doing this, I don't know, 12 years and um, it doesn't even seem like that right now. But uh, my advice is to uh, that generation is, you know, seek mentorship, seek internships, seek outside influences that can, that can make you better at what you do. Don't forget as you develop professionally to also develop personally as well. Um, don't neglect other things to be an athletic trainer. Remember at the end of the day, it's a job. Okay, even though sometimes the job is 24 seven, sometimes you have to shut it down. Um, I know that, um, you know, part of a wave now is to combat burnout. Um, and you have to try to find other things outside of athletic training that interest you, that you can keep going. And, you know, I don't, I don't mean for the things to distract you from your ultimate goal, but understand that um, you can, be who you want to be and do what you want to do um even if you do work a lot um so find a hobby uh and do things of that nature um that that really bring you other types of fulfillment than you know helping people all the time um and you know to, to all those that have mentored me and, and continue to do so you know thank you to those guys and um you know yeah, I think that's about it for me. <laughs> Ezron, thank you so much for taking the time, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you. Bye. Take care.